So the question of the day, do you like suspenseful type movies? I'm not talking about the ones that are the action-packed where you're waiting to see if he's going to jump across the canyon and, woo, that's the exciting part, right? No, I'm talking about the other ones, the ones my teenagers like. Those suspenseful ones where there's that greechy, screechy, violin music. Here goes something scary going on. And you're ready to have a heart attack. Your heart's ready to explode out of your chest because you don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know what's going to take place. See, that's the one I'm asking you about today because you know what? If there's anything good about those kinds of movies, it lets me know that I'm pretty smart. You know why? Because I'm the one saying it to the screen. Don't go in there. You better start running right now. See, I know what the answer is because there's suspense going on. There's something that's bad that's going to happen. It's not good. But today, as we gather here today, I want you to look. The suspense is killing me. Well, today, it's time to kill the suspense. This is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to do it. Take a look at these uh, eight different elements, I guess, of suspense. Uh, there's timing, intriguing question, fears, foreshadowing, and clues, setting, false sense of security, villain and victim, and, of course, syntax and pacing. Well, you know, obviously, from those shows, if you've seen them before, where these things come into play. The thing that builds suspense, that makes things the way they are, the timing of things. Really, you're going to stay at midnight at a camp all by yourself? Why would you do that, Right? And all of a sudden, then we've got the intriguing question. Is the hero really going to make it? Is he going to be able to be able to survive? What's going to happen? Why is this all taking place? What is the situation that's going on? The fears. The fears are so evident. Again, as I said, the screechy music that happens, and they kind of prolong it. In fact, the foreshadowing and clues. You would know that something's wrong when there aren't any people left where things keep disappearing or things keep happening. These are foreboding things. They're terrible. And we know that as the suspense builds, it continues to build in us. And we look around the room to see if we can reassure ourselves because you know what? what's on the screen scares us. We watch it and we see what's taking place. Well, then there's the setting. I've already kind of gone over that. How about that false sense of security? You got the big buff guy. Yeah, I'll come out here. I'll protect everybody. And sure enough, he's one of the first ones that goes. You know, that's the way suspense is. That's the way it is in the fact that we're trying to figure out what's taking place. There's a villain and a victim every time. And we watch and we wait to see what's taking place and who did it and all this kind of stuff. And it scares us. And some of us find it fun. However, most of us do not. And then there's the syntax and pacing. You hear the words that are said you hear and see the pacing that the author, the director, if you will, continues to carry it out. It's not just 30 seconds of suspense. They drag it out for three, four, five, six minutes. They continue to take it to the nth degree to get that suspenseful feeling. And you know what? It's killing us, isn't it? It's killing us. Well, look at what happens today with Jesus and his words. See, at that time, the Feast of Dedication is taking place, and it's taking place at Jerusalem. There's the setting. It's the location of Jerusalem, a big hub of activity. You've got people coming in from all over the world just at the right time, the right place, and Jesus is there for the Feast of Dedication. This is also known as Hanukkah or the Festival of Lights. Uh, the idea that here they celebrate this lamp that as the Jewish people were able to claim back their temple and they had this lamp and it had oil that was not uh, putrefied. In other words, it was actually, it was pure. And what should have lasted only one day lasted eight days. And they celebrate this. This is real stuff. This is true things that have happened, miracles of God. And Jesus is walking around in the temple and so sure enough, here comes the antagonist, the Jews. The Jews that had actually a case against him, and here's what they said. They gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Come on out with it. Let us know. And we see the suspense rise greatly. What's Jesus going to say? What's he going to say? What's he going to do? They're asking him if he's the Christ. Well, we know that he is. Is he going to answer? Well, sure he does. 
Sure he does. And he says to them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. See, they had an agenda, didn't they? The victim here is Jesus. They've kind of cornered him. They've, they've found out where he is, and they've come up to him. They want to find out. But if you really look into this, are they really looking for information? No. All they want to hear him say that he's the Christ so they can take him out and stone him. They can kill him right there for blasphemy. Because after all, don't they know better? Aren't they the ones who know really what's taken place? But see, Jesus is both God and man. And he stands before them. He already knows what they're plotting. And he says, I told you, and you do not believe. Have you looked at the works that have taken place? Have you seen what I've done for you? And yet they refuse to believe. And so how do we tie this in today with the suspense? is killing me. My dear friends, much like it was at that time, it is also this time today. People refuse to believe. People refuse to believe true story, true word. And of course, yes, we do take it on faith. We're not dumb. We take it on faith that God continues to keep his promises and he keeps his word and he said, you know what, I have a mission. I'm going to go and suffer on the cross for you. The only problem is, is that we come up an obstacle that would help us to really start to question or doubt what's going on. In fact, the world has already taken into it. See, there is this thing, and it's being in suspense. I, I want to show you this next really kind of outline of, of, of a flow of things. I want to show you this chart, but I also want to keep you in suspense. Wait for it. Wait for it. The suspense is killing you, isn't it? See, we want to know the answer, don't we? We want to know the answer, and here it is. See in that first box there, death is cruel. Death has entered into our world because of our first parents when sin entered in. When sin entered in, we're going to take a look at what that actually means today. And I don't want you to be afraid, but we're going to talk facts here. See, the reality is death is cruel and it pursues me. It pursues you, it pursues me, it pursues everybody. And it will one day take place for all of us. No matter who you are, it will take place. In fact, death is 100% accurate. It never fails. Death is cruel. And you go through the flow chart there, death's job is to make me afraid, to make me fearful. What's going on? How come I'm not living more? See, the world tells itself a lie when it says, oh yeah, everything's getting better, we're living longer, and we're getting stronger, and we know more things, we're eating right, and we're doing healthy things, and we're doing all this great stuff. But the reality is you're still going to die. And the reality is, is that it tries to destroy you. It says, you know what, this is it. No more. The suspense is going to kill you. It's coming around the corner, but you don't know when. And it's going to mess with your mind. Death's grip, when we identify it, gives no hope. Death's grip makes me feel alone. Death's grip makes me fear, feel vulnerable. What can I do? How is it that I can extend my life further? What is it that I can do to make sure that I keep living? My dear friends, as the suspense is killing us, there is an answer. And that answer, that answer is, if it'll go, uh-oh. Can we advance, please? There it is. All right, perfect. There it is. We are no longer in suspense because Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the Savior, and he's pursuing you and me just like death is, except Jesus has the advantage. See, he's already defeated sin, death, and the devil. He's given his life so that you and I might live, and he's already won salvation. That's the great part about it. 
See, we can try to do all the things that we can in this life to make it last longer. But the only truth is that once everybody steps in eternity, in other words, once we die here, we step into eternity. And that question is, where will we spend it? What are we going to do? Well, Jesus is our answer. He's the Savior. In fact, Jesus delivers. No longer do we have to worry. No longer do we have to be afraid of what that's going to look like. If we already know that it's coming and Jesus says, hey, hold on, guess what? You're going to fall asleep. That's what I call it. You're going to fall asleep and you're going to wake up with me. You're going to wake up in my arms. The fact of the matter is that he's going to provide confidence and calmness to us. So that even though our world, as crazy as it is, as things continue to happen around us, we know that Jesus delivers confidence and calmness to all who believe in him. And Jesus' grip on us, he gives us hope. He will never let go. You heard what Ted said with the kids. Jesus will never let go. He connects me, in other words, you and me, to the Father, and he provides for us eternal life by him and him alone. And sure enough, Jesus' grip means I'm well protected. I don't have to be vulnerable out there. I know the answer. And I don't even have to necessarily boast in it, but I boast in my Savior, Jesus Christ, as Lord. See, because this is what he says. Don't take my word for it. Listen to what Jesus says. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. And no one, I repeat, no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. My dear friends, that's good news for us this day. You see, the suspense does not have to kill us. The suspense does not have to make us afraid or vulnerable or lonely or anything else. We know that God's word continues to shine through. We know that he is faithful. We know that he's true. We know that in even Revelation, as the future looks into it, we know that the place that we're going to He's going to wipe away all our tears. No more suffering, no more hurting. He'll continue to guide us and lead us to himself, which leads us to heaven to be with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. And isn't it interesting the way God works all of that out? You know what he says? He says the lamb that's sitting at the center, the lamb that is at the center, around, on, in the throne he is the one that will be our shepherd my dear friends today rejoice do not be afraid for Jesus has killed the suspense go in, go in God's peace this day amen now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord our Lamb our shepherd and our Savior amen I want to take opportunity to welcome you all to work.